Hello and welcome to tonight's Torah portion. Before we get started, I'm going to say our customary blessed. Blessed art thou, Lord our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments and commanded us to engross ourselves with the words of Torah. Please, Lord our God, sweeten the words of your Torah in our mouths and in the mouths of all your people, Israel. May we and our offspring and the offspring of your people, the house of Israel, may we all together know your name and study your Torah for the sake of fulfilling your desire. Blessed are you, Lord, who teaches Torah to his people, Israel. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who chose us from all the nations and gave us the Torah. Blessed are you, Lord, giver of the Torah. May the Lord bless you and keep watch over you. May the Lord make his presence and light to enlighten you, and may he be kind to you. May the Lord bestow favor on you and grant you peace. Today's Torah portion is Vayera. Torah portion for today is Genesis 18, 1 through 22, 4. Prophets 2 Kings 4, 1 through 37. Our Brit Hadesha is Luke 2, 1 through 38. Romans 9, 6 through 9. Galatians 4, 21 through 31. Hebrews 6, 13 through 20. 11, 13 through 9. James 2, 14 through 24. Our first reading is Genesis 18, 1 through 22, 4. And Yahweh appeared to him by the oaks of memory, and he sat next. He sat at the door of his tent in the heat of the day. He lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, three men were standing in front of him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent door to meet them, and bowed himself to the earth, and said, O Yahweh. If I have found favor in your sight, do not pass by your servants. Let a little water be brought, and wash your feet, and rest yourself under the tree. While I bring a morsel of bread, that you may refresh yourselves. And after that you may pass on, since you have come to your servant. So they said, Do as you have said. And Abraham went quickly into the tent to Sarah, and said, Quickly, Quick, Three Sayas of fine flour, knead it and make cakes. And Abraham ran to the herd and took a calf, tender and good, and gave it to the young man who prepared it quickly. Then he took curds and milk from in the calf that he had prepared and set it before them, and he stood by them under the tree while they ate. They said to him, Where is Sarah your wife? And he said, She is in the tent. Yahweh said, I will surely return to you about this time next year, and Sarah your wife shall have a son. And Sarah was listening at the tent door behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old, advanced in years. The way of women had ceased to be with Sarah. So Sarah laughed to herself, saying, After I am worn out, and my Lord is old, shall I have pleasure? Yahweh said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh and say, Shall I indeed bear a child now that I am old? Is anything too hard for Yahuwah at the appointed time? I will return to you about this time next year, and Sarah shall have a son. But Sarah denied it, saying, I did not laugh, and she was afraid. He said, No, but you did laugh. Then the men set out from there, and they looked down toward Saddam. And Abraham went to them and to set them on their way. Yahuwah said, Shall I hide from Abraham what I am about to do? <clears throat> Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation. And all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. For I have chosen him that he may command his children and household after him to keep the way of Yahweh by doing righteousness and justice, so that Yahweh may bring to Abraham what he had promised him. <clears throat> then Yahweh said, Because thou cry against Saddam and Gomorrah is great and their sin is very grave, I'll go down to see whether they have done Altogether, according to the outcry that has come to me, and if not, I will know. So the men turned from there and went towards Sodom. But Abraham stood there before Yahweh, and Abraham drew near and said, Will you indeed sweep away the righteous with the wicked? Suppose there are fifty righteous within the city. Will you not sweep away the place and not spare it for the fifty righteous who are in it? Far be it from you to do such a thing, to put the righteous to death and the wicked, with the wicked. So that the righteous fared as the wicked. Far be that from you, shall not the judge of all the earth do what is just? 
And Yahweh said, If I find at Saddam fifty righteous in the city, I will spare the whole place for their sake. And Abraham answered and said, Behold, I have undertaken to speak to Yahweh. I, who am but ju just dust and ashes, suppose f five of the fifty righteous are lacking. Would you destroy the whole city for the lack of five? He said, I will not destroy it if I find forty-five there. Again he spoke to him, saying, Suppose forty are found there. He answered, For the sake of forty, I will not do it. Then he said, Oh, let not Yahweh be angry, for and I will speak. Suppose there are thirty. Suppose thirty are found there. He answered, I will not do it if I find thirty there. He said, Behold, I have undertaken to speak to Yahweh. Suppose twenty are found there. He answered, For the sake of twenty, I will not destroy it. Then he said, O oh, let not Yahweh be angry, and I'll speak again, but this once. Suppose ten are found there. He answered, For the sake of ten I will not destroy it. And Yahweh went his way. When he had finished speaking to Abraham, and Abraham returned to his place, The two angels came to Saddam in the evening, and Lot was sitting in the in the gate of Saddam. When Lot saw them, he rose to meet them and bowed himself in the, with his face to the earth and said, My lords, please turn aside to your servant's house and spend the night and wash your feet. Then you may rise and go up early on your way. They said, No, we will spend the night in the town square. But he pressed them strongly, so they turned aside to him and entered his house, and he made them a feast. And baked and leaven bread and they ate. But before the, they lay down, the men of the city, the men of Saddam, both young and old, all the people to the last man surrounded the house. And they called to Lot, Where are the men who came to you tonight? Bring them out to us that we may know them. Lot went out to the men at the entrance and shut the door after him and said, I beg you, my brothers, do not act so wickedly. Behold, I have two daughters who have not known any men. Let me bring them out to you and do to them as you please. Only do not do nothing to these men, for they have come under the shelter of my roof. But they said, Stand back. And they said, This fellow came to sojourn, and he has become the judge. Now we will deal worse with you than with them. Then they pressed hard against the man Lot and drew near to break the door down. But the men reacted out. The men reached out their hands, and brought Lot into the house with them, and shut the door. And they struck with blindness the men who were at the entrance of the house, both small and great, so that they were, were, themselves, out, were themselves out groping for the door. Then the men said to Lot, Have you anyone else here? Sons and sons, sons-in-law, sons, daughters, or anyone you have in a city, bring them out of the place. For we are about to destroy this place, because the outcry against its people has become great before Yahweh. And Yahweh has sent us to destroy it. So Lot went out and said to his sons-in-laws, who were to marry his daughters, Up, get out of this place, for Yahweh is about to destroy the city. But he seemed to his sons-in-laws to be justing. As morning dawns the dawned, the angels urged Lot, saying, Up, take your wife and your two daughters who are here, lest you be swept away in the punishment of the city. But he lingered. So the men seized him and his wife and his two daughters by the hand, Yahweh being merciful to him, and they brought him out and set him against the, set him outside the city. And as they brought them out, one said, Escape for your life. Do not look back. Or stop anywhere in the valley, escape to the hills, lest you be swept away. And Lot said to them, O oh, my lords, O oh, no, my lords, behold, your servant has found favor in your sights, and you have shown me great kindness in saving my life. But I cannot escape to the hills, lest disaster overtake me near die. Behold, the city is near enough to flee to it. To flee. And it is a little one. Let me escape there. Is it not a little one? And my life will be saved. He said to him, Behold, I grant you this favor, that I will not overthrow the city of which you have spoken. Escape there quickly, for I will I can do nothing till you arrive there. Therefore, the name of the city was called Zero. The sun had, ridden, had risen 
on the earth and when Lot came to Zor. When Yahweh rained on Saddam and Gomorrah sulfur and fire from Yahweh out of the heavens, and he overthrew, the, overthrew those cities, and all the valley, and all the inhabitants of the city, and what grew on the ground. But Lot's wife behind him looked back, and she became a pillar of salt. And Abraham went out early in the morning to the place where he had stood before Yahweh, and he looked down toward Saddam and Gomorrah, toward all the land of the valley, and he looked, and behold, the smoke of the land went up like the smoke of a furnace. So it was that when Yahweh, when Elohim destroyed the cities of the valley, Elohim remembered Abraham and sent Lot out of the midst of the overthrow when he overthrew the cities in which Lot had lived. Now Lot went up out of Zerah and lived in the hills with his two daughters, for he was afraid to live in Zerah. <clears throat> so he lived in it. In a cave with his two daughters. And the firstborn said to the younger. Our father is old. And there is not a man on the earth to come into us after the manner of all the earth. Come let us make our father drink wine. And we will lie with him that we may preserve offspring for our father. So they made their father drunk. Father drink wine. And the firstborn went in and lay with their father. He did not know when she lay down or when she arose. The next day the firstborn said to the younger, Behold, I lay at last with my father. Let us make him drink wine tonight also, that you go in and lie with him, that we may preserve offspring for our father. So they made their father drink wine that night also. And the younger arose and lay with him. And he did not know... The next, uh, oops. Thus both the daughters of Lot became pregnant by their father. The firstborn bore a son and called his name Moab. He is the father of the Moabites to this day. The younger also bore a son and is called his name Ben Ami. And he is father of the Ammonites to this day. From there, Abraham journeyed toward the territory of Negeb and lived between Kadesh and Sir. And he sojourned in Gerah. And Abraham said to Sarah his wife, She is my sister. And Abimelech king of Gerar sent out and took Sarah. Sent and took Sarah. But Elohim came to Abimelech in the dream by night and said to him, Behold, you are a dead man because of the woman whom you have taken, for she is a man's wife. Now Abimelech had not approached her, so he said, Lord, will you not kill? Will you kill an innocent people? Did he not? himself say to me she is my sister and she herself said he is my brother in the integrity of my heart and innocence of my hands i have done this then elohim said to him in the dream yes i know that you've done this <coughs> in the integrity of your heart and it is i who kept you from sinning against me therefore i did not let you touch her now then return a man's wife for he is a pro for he is a prophet so that he will pray for you and you will live but if you do not return her Know that you will surely die, you and all who are yours. So Abimelech arose early in the morning and called all his servants and told them all these things that the men were very much afraid. Then Abimelech called Abraham and said to him, What have you done to us? And how have I sinned against you that I have brought on me and my kingdom a great sin? You have done to me things that ought not to be done. And Abimelech said to Abraham, what did you see that I did th What did I see that you did these things? A Abraham said I did I did it because I thought there was no fear of Elohim at all in this place, and they will kill me because of my wife. Besides she is indeed my sister, the daughter of my father, though not the daughter of my mother, and she became my wife. And when Elohim caused me to wander from my father's house, I said to her, This is the kindness you must do me. At every place to which we come of me, we come, say of me, He is my brother. And Abimelech took sheep and oxen and male servants and female servants and gave them to Abraham and returned Sarah his wife. And Abimelech said, Behold, my land is before you. Dwell where it pleases you. So... To Sarah he said, Behold, I have given your brother a thousand pieces of silver. It is a sign of your innocence in the eyes of all. 
who are with you and before everyone, you are vindicated. Then Abraham prayed to Elohim, and Elohim healed Abimelech, and also healed his wife and female slaves so that they bore children. For Yahweh had closed all the wombs of the house of Abimelech because of Sarah, Abraham's wife. Yahweh visited Sarah as he had said, and Yahweh did to Sarah as he had promised. And Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age at the time of which Elohim had spoken to him. Abraham called the name of his sons, who was born to him, whom Sarah bore to Isaac. And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac when he was eight days old, as Elohim had commanded him. Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born to him. And Sarah said, Elohim has made laughter for me. Everyone who hears will laugh over me. And she said, Who? Who would have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse a child, children, yet have borne him a son in his old age? And the child grew and was weaned. And Abraham made a great feast on the day that Isaac was weaned. But Sarah saw that the son of Hagar the Egyptians, whom she had borne to Abraham, laughing. So she said to Abraham, Cast out this slave man with her sons. For the son of this slave man shall not be heir with my son Isaac. And the thing was very displeasing to Abraham on the account of his son. But Elohim said to Abraham, Be not displeased because of the boy and because of your slave woman. Whatever Sarah says to you, do as she tells you. For through Isaac shall your offspring be named. And I will make a nation of the son of the slave woman also, because he is your offspring. So Abraham rose early in the morning and took bread and skin of water and gave it to her, to Hagar putting it on her shoulder along with the child and sent her away. And she departed and wandered off into the wilderness of Beersheba. When the water and the skin was gone, she put the child under one of the bu bushes. Then she went and sat down opposite of him a good way off, about the distance of a bow shot. For she said, Let me not look on the death of the child. As she sat opposite him, she lifted up her voice and wept. And Elohim heard the voice of the boy. And the angel of Elohim called to Hagar from the heaven and said to her, what troubles you, Hagar? Fear not, for Elohim has heard the voice of the boy where he is. Up, lift up the boy and hold him fast with your hands, for I'll make him f into a great nation. Then Elohim opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water. And she went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy a drink. And Elohim was with the boy, and he grew up. He lived in the wilderness and became an expert with the bow. He lived in the wilderness of Paran. And his mother took a wife for him in, from the land of Egypt. At that time, Abimelech and Pichol, the commander of his army, said to Abraham, Elohim is with you in all that you do. Now, therefore, swear to me by Elohim that you will not deal falsely with me or with my descendants or with my posterity. But as I have dealt kindly with you, so you deal with me and with the land with, where you have sojourned. And Abraham said, I, I will swear. When Abraham rep reproved Abimelech about a well of water that Abimelech's servant had seized, Abimelech said, I do not know who has done this thing. You did not tell me, and I have not heard, it, heard of it until today. So Abraham took sheep and oxen and gave them to Abimelech, and the two men s made a covenant. Abraham set seven, ewes, seven ewe lambs, of the flock apart. And Abimelech said to Abraham, What is the meaning of these seven ewe lambs that you have set apart? He said to him, These seven ewe lambs will <coughs> you will take from my hand that this may be a witness for all for me that I dug this well. Therefore that place was called Beersheba, because there are both of them sworn oaths. So they made a covenant at Beersheba, then Abimelech and Pekul, the, the commander of his army, rose up and returned to the land of the Philistines. Abraham planted a Tamarisk tree in Beersheba, and called there on the name of Yahweh, an everlasting Elohim, and Abraham sojourned many days in the land of the Philistines. After these things, Elohim tested Abraham and, and said to him, Abraham, and he said, Here I am. He said, Take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Mir, and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. So Abraham rose up early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two 
of his young men with him and his son Isaac. And he cut the wood for the burnt offering and rose and went to the place where Elohim had told him. On the third day Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place from afar. Two Kings four one to thirty seven. Now the wife of one of the sons of the prophets cried to Elisha, Your servant, my husband, is dead, and you know that your servant feared Yahweh. But the creditor has come to take my two children to be his slaves. And Elisha said to her, What shall I do for you? Tell me what you, what have you in the house? And she said, Your servant has nothing in the house except a jar of oil. Then he said, Go outside, borrow vessels from all your neighbors, empty the empty vessels, and not too few. Then go in and shut the door behind yourself and your sons and pour into all these vessels. And then, and when one is full, set it aside. So he went from him and shut the door behind him, behind herself and her sons. And as she poured, they brought the vessels to her. When the vessels were full, she said to her sons, Bring me another vessel. And he said to her, this is, this, There is not another. Then the oil stopped flowing. She came and told the men of Elohim, and he said, Go sell the oil and pay your debts, and you and your sons can live on the rest. One day Elisha went on to Shumi, where wealthy men lived, who urged him to eat some, some food. So whenever he passed that way, he would turn in there to eat food. And she said to her husband, Behold, behold now. I know that this is a holy man of Elohim who is continually passing our way. Let us make a small room on the roof with walls and put there for him a bed, a table, and a chair, and a lamp, so that whenever he comes to us, he can go in there. One day he came there, and he turned into the chamber and rested there, and he said to Gehazi, his servant, Call to the Shunammite. When he had called her, she stood before him, and he said, Say now to her, See, you have taken all this trouble for us. What is to be done for you? Would you have a would you have a word spoken on your behalf to the king or the commander of the army? She answered, "I dwell among my own people." And he said, "What then is to be done for her?" Gehazi answered, "Well, she has no son, and her husband is old." He said, "Call her." And when he had called her, she stood in the door, and he said, "At this season, about this time next year, you shall embrace a son." And she said. No, my lord, O man of Elohim, do not lie to your servant. But the woman conceived and bore a son about that time the following spring, and Elisha had said to her, as Elisha had said to her. When a child had grown, he went out one day to his father among the reapers, and he said to his father, O oh, my head, my head, the father said to his servant, Carry him to his mother. When he had lifted him and brought him to his mother, the child sat on her lap till noon, and then he died. She went up and laid him on the bed of the man of Elohim and shut the door behind him and went out. Then she called to her husband and said, Send me one of the servants and one of the donkeys, that I may go quickly to the man of Elohim and come back again. Then he said, Where will you go to the, him today? It is neither noon, moon nor Sabbath. And he said, All is well. Then she saddled the donkey and said to her servant, Urge the animal on. Do not slacken the pace for me unless I tell you. So she set, set out and came to the man of Elohim at Mount Carmel. When the man of Elohim saw her coming, he said to Gehazi, his servant, Look, there is a Shunammite. Run at once to meet her and say to her, Is all well with you? Is all well with your husband and is all well with the child? And she answered, All is well. When she came to the mountain of man of Elohim, she did. She caught hold of his feet, and Gehazi came to push her away. But the man of Elohim said, "Leave her alone, for she is in bitter distress, and Yahweh has hidden it from me and has not told me." Then she said, "Did my uh, did I ask my lord for a son? Did I not say, do not deceive me?" He said to Gehazi, "Tie up your garments and take my staff in your hand and go." If you meet anyone, do not greet him, or if anyone greets you, do not reply, and lay my staff on the face of the child. Then the mother of the child said, As Yahweh lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. And so he rose and followed her. Gehazi went on ahead and laid the staff on the face of the child, but there was no sound or sign of life. 
Therefore he returned to meet him and told him, The child has not awakened. When, El when Elisha came into the house, he saw the child lying dead on his bed. So he went in and shut the door behind the two of them and prayed to Yahweh. Then he went up and lay on the child, putting his mouth on his mouth, eyes on his eyes, and his hands on his hands, and he stretched himself upon him. The flesh of the child became warm. Then he rose up again and walked once back and forth in the house, and went up and stretched himself upon him. The child sneezed seven times, and the child opened his eyes. Then he summoned Gehazi and said, Call the Shunammite. So he called her, and when she came to him, he said, Pick up your son. And she came and fell at, at his feet, bowing to the ground, and she picked up her son and went out. Luke 2, 1 through 38. In those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when uh, uh, Quirinius, the governor of Syria, and all went to be registered, each to his own town. So Joseph went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was at the house of because he was of the house of the lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in the swaddling cloths and laid him on the manger, because there was no place for them at the end. And in the same region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good, no good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Hamashiach the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with an angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising Elohim and saying, Glory to Elohim in the highest. And on earth peace among those to whom, with whom he is pleased. When angels went away from them into the heavens, and the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem, and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went in haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told to them, Concerning this child. And all who had heard it wandered. At what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things. Pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned glorifying and praising Elohim. For they had heard and seen. As it had been told to them. And at the end of the eighth. Eight days. When he was circumcised. He was called Yeshua. The name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. And when the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem and presented him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male who first opens the womb shall be called holy in the Lord, to the Lord. And to offer a sacrifice according to what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there is a young man in Jerusalem whose name is Simeon, and this man who is righteous and devout, waiting to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen Lord's Hamashiach. And he came to, in the Spirit to the temple, into the temple. And when the parents brought up in the child Yeshua to do f for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed him blessed Elohim and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, that you have prepared in the presence of all people a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And his father and his mother marveled at what was said about him, and Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and rising of many in Israel, and for a sign that is opposed, and as a sword will pierce through your own soul also. 
so that thoughts from many hearts may be revealed. And there was a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanael, the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, hang having lived with her husband seven years from when she was a virgin. And then as a widow until she was 84, she did not depart from the temple, worshipping with fasting and prayer night and day. And coming up at that very hour, she began to give thanks to Elohim and speak to of him to all who were waiting for the redemption of Jerusalem. Romans 9, 6-9 but it is not as thought, though the word of Elohim had failed, for not all who are descended from Israel belong to Israel, and not all are children of Abraham because they are his offspring. But through Isaac shall you, your offspring be named. This means that it is not the child of the flesh who are the children of Elohim, but the children of the promise are counted as offspring. For this is what the promise said, About this time next year I will return, and Sarah shall, give, shall have a son. Galatians 4, 21-31 Tell me, you who desire to be under the law, do not listen to the law, for it is written to Elohim, to, th written, that Abraham had two sons, only one by a slave woman and one by a free woman. But the son of the slave was born according to the flesh, while the man of the free, mo free woman was born through promise. Now this may be interpreted allegorically. The women are two covenants. One is from Mount Sinai bearing children for slavery. She is Hagar. Now Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia. She corresponds with the present Jerusalem for she is in slavery with her children. But the Jerusalem above is free. And she is our mother for it is written. Rejoice O barren one who does not bear. Break forth and cry aloud, you who are not in labor, for the children of the desolate one will be more than those of the one who has a husband. <clears throat> now you brothers like Isaac are children of promise, but just as that time he who was born according to the flesh persecuted him who was born according to the spirit, so also it is now. But what does the scripture say? Cast out the slave woman and her son, for the son of the slave shall not inherit with the sons of the free woman. So brothers, we are not children of the slave, but of the free woman. Hebrews six thirteen through 20 For when Elohim made a promise to Abraham, since he had no one greater by whom to swear, he swore by himself, saying, Surely I will bless you and multiply you. And thus Abraham, having patiently waited, obtained the promise. For people swear by by something greater than themselves, and in all their disputes an oath is final for confirmation. So when Elohim desired to show more convincingly to the heirs of the promise the un unchangeable character of his purpose, he guaranteed it with an oath. So that by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for Elohim to lie, we who have our fled for refuge might have strong encouragement to hold fast to the hope set before us. We have this as a sure and steadfast anchor to the, of the soul, a hope that enters into our inner place being the curtain, behind the curtain, where Yeshua has gone as a forerunner on our behalf, having become a high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Hebrews 11, 13-19 These all died in faith, not having received the things of promise, but having seen them and greeted them from, from afar, and having acknowledged that they were strangers and exiles on the earth. For people who speak thus make it clear that they are seeking a homeland, if they had been thinking of that land from which they had gone out, they would have had an opportunity to, uh, uh, to return. But as it is, they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore Elohim is not ashamed to be called their Elohim, for he has prepared for them a city. By faith Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac, and he who had received the promise was an act of offering up his only son of whom it was said, Through Isaac shall your offspring be named. 
He considered that Elohim was able even to raise him from the dead, from which, figuratively speaking, he did receive him back. James 2, 14 through 24. What good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, be warmed and filled, without giving them the things needed for the body, what good is that? So also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. But someone will say, You have faith and I have works. Show me your faith apart from your works, and I will show you my faith by works. You believe that Elohim is one. You do well. Even the demons believe and shudder. Do you want to be shown? You foolish person, the f that faith apart from works is useless. Was not Abraham our father justified by the works when he offered up his son Isaac on the altar? You see that faith was active along with his works. And faith was completed by his works. And the scripture was fulfilled that says Abraham believed Elohim and it was counted to him as righteousness. And he called a friend of he was called a friend of Elohim. You see that a person is justified by the works and not by faith alone. Blessed art thou, Lord our God, King of the universe, who gave us the Torah of truth and set everlasting life in our midst. Blessed art thou, Lord our God, thou Lord, giver of the Torah.